Hello everyone, welcome to Lent Challenge, brought to you by Locusts of Wild Honey. And first of all, I'd like to say a massive thank you to all of you who've signed up to be members of the group and signed up for the challenge. I'm very much looking forward to sharing this time of Lent with you through the media of Facebook and whatever else uh, in way, the way of media we happen to use over the forthcoming six weeks of Lent. If you want to ask uh, some of your friends, Facebook friends, to uh, come into the group, invite them into the group, you'll be very welcome to do that. We've got 20 members so far, including myself, which is absolutely great. Um, but it is mostly my, fa my Facebook friends. So if you want to ask any of your friends who you think might be interested that are not, not already part of the group, then please do invite them. You need to let me know that you have invited them because I will have to approve their being uh, admitted as members to the group. But uh, just tell me that you, the names of people that you've invited, if you do, and then I'll be ready to see them when they pop up uh, in the group and I can give them the approval. Now, what I wanted to do today in this video is just to introduce the uh, Sermon on the Mount to you as the Lent Challenge and to give you one or two guidelines about how to go through the challenge. I hope you don't mind me referring to one or two notes that I've made. But these guidelines I'll publish in the group and pin them to the top but you'll be able to uh, find them anyway and I'll tell you in, uh, in a little while how to find them. So, first of all, the Lent challenge is to read the Sermon on the Mount, St Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7, on every day of Lent. That's the whole of the 40 days of Lent. Why the Sermon on the Mount? Well, I happen to think that uh, it contains all that we need to know about life in the Kingdom of God. It tells us about how our lives should be. It tells us uh, how someone in the Kingdom of God thinks, feels, speaks, behaves. And Jesus said uh, when he came out of the wilderness, repent for the Kingdom of God is at hand and then in St Matthew's Gospel he goes on to explain to his disciples what that is all about in the Sermon on the Mount. Later on in St Matthew's Gospels we have the parables of Jesus, which are stories which highlight what the Kingdom of God is actually all about and how we see it around us. I think the Sermon on the Mount is the, one of the most important parts of the, all four of the Gospels. And it's regarded as one of the greatest speeches of all time, if indeed the Sermon on the Mount was a speech. Why do it for 40 days? Well, a few weeks ago I was listening to someone speak and they said that when you read something, then you learn something. But when you read it twice, when you read the same thing twice, then you learn something about yourself. And then it struck me, well, what if we read the same thing every day for 40 days? We're going to learn an immense amount about the subject and about ourselves. So it seemed to me then fitting that it was a good idea to do this for the season of Lent when we're thinking mostly about ourselves and our own walk with God. I guess that there'll be a number of things that you could look forward to getting out of the challenge but it'd be a good idea if before you start off the 40 days that you try to Think about for yourself what you would like to get out of the challenge as the 40 days go by. Now when we get to, to reading the Sermon on the Mount, those three chapters, I found that it took me about 
13, 14 or 15 minutes to read just depending upon how quickly I read it. Of course you can take your time over it, as much time as you like. Um, but if you just read it as, it as it's written there, it takes about 13 to 15 minutes and that's reading it out loud. And it's a good idea really to uh, read it out loud if you can find yourself a space where you won't be disturbed and where you're not disturbing anybody else perhaps and read it out loud to yourself. If you're brave enough, you could perhaps go in Marketplace in the middle of town and read it out loud there, but I'll leave that up to you. If you don't really want to read it, if, I might, if you're finding that might be a bit of a trial, you can always listen to it being read. And on that uh, group page, you can find a link, there is a link, to me actually reading it for you. So if you can bear my voice over and over then you can actually listen to it being read. Now you don't have to read this whole sermon out all at one go every time, every day. You can read parts of it uh, each day. For instance you could read um, chapter 5 in the morning, chapter 6 in the afternoon and chapter 7 in the evening. It's entirely up to you. You can split it up just how you like. And if you miss a day or you fall off the challenge for a few days because of other things have come up or you've forgotten, uh, which does sometimes uh, happen, then don't worry about that. You don't have to make up the time. Just carry on from where you left off. Now, if you're reading it from a Bible, you can use any translation that you like. It might be better to stick to one version of the Bible uh, all the way through, but there's no harm in checking out other versions at the same time uh, to see what that, the translation is in that, because sometimes they do differ, and in that difference sometimes you actually do learn something. You get different perceptions about what a passage is actually about. Different uh, things are highlighted. You get different insights from the different translations. So no harm will be done. In fact, if you do change the translation that you're reading from time to time during the 40 days. Before you come to read each day, it's a good idea if you ask the Holy Spirit to guide you through your reading. Uh, and to surround you in that reading so that you might get some insight from God as you're reading. No doubt you will get insights, many, many insights, I hope. But if you're asking the Holy Spirit to lead you in it, then so much the better. Also, just keep a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper, a notebook by your side while you're read, reading so that you can jot down anything that jumps out at you, any insights that, get, that you get, any light bulb moments that might go off in your head, in your heart. Um, make a note of them and if you like you can share them on the group. That's partly what the group is there for. And again at the end of the reading if you'd like to just take a, a, a minute or two to think about what you've read and again to jot down one or two things that might have come up for you. And as I said, if you've got any insights, any thoughts or questions that you'd like to share with the group, then please do post them on the group page. And I hope that everyone else will join in with the discussion that you might start with posting your ideas and thoughts and opinions. It's, all, it's for all of us to share in, just as though we might be sat together in a group, in a room, uh, talking to one another then we can do that through that medium of Facebook. Uh, please don't hesitate to put your thoughts, your questions, your anxieties or whatever it is uh, that's related to this reading uh, on the group and it's for all of us then to help in shedding more light on what it is that uh, you're concerned about, the questions that you have or the opinions that you, you might have. If you want to ask me privately anything uh, about what you're reading, then you can by all means do that. If you send me a direct Facebook message, no one else will see it. 
and I'll do my best to answer the question. But the idea about having the group is, as I said, it's like being sat in a room together, studying together. And I hope that in the group we'll be able to build the confidence of one another to be able to share things openly. I'll probably actively try and encourage individuals uh, to share their thoughts through, uh, through the group. Uh, if I don't hear from anyone uh, for a long time, I might ask them what they uh, what they think. But there again, don't be uh, think don't think that you're obliged to answer any of the questions that I might ask you. Um, they're there just to give you the invitation. Because sometimes when we're in a group, uh, if you're like me, um, very often you look for a way into the group. And until you find that way in, you just sit there saying nothing. And sometimes you might feel that you need to be invited to make a, a, an offering to the group. So uh, you might find that from time to time I might call on individuals to uh, offer their insights to what the group is having to say. Now the challenge uh, is, as I said, for 40 days. If you start the challenge on Ash Wednesday, it does mean that you'll finish the challenge on Palm Sunday. But you can start it on the first Sunday in Lent, which is a few days after Ash Wednesday. Uh, if you start it on the first Sunday of Lent, it will mean that you'll finish on Monday Thursday. Either way, you know, it doesn't matter when you start, uh, when you start we'll just determine when you finish. On each Monday of Lent I'll do a video similar to this, a short one hopefully, I'll try to keep to something like five minutes in the video not go on and on uh, as I very often do as you know. Uh, I'll do a short video about something that either has struck me or something about that's come up in the group uh, about that particular part that's been of interest to you or to me. Um, I've sort of mentally uh, divided up the Sermon on the Mount into six sections um, which I think are sections that are important to me that seem to fit together and I'll try and say something about those but at the same time if anything comes up that I think uh, I might be able to help the group with I'll mention those as well on that Monday video and the, uh, the video will go out on a Monday it'll go out as a locust and wild honey video so it'll go on that page and it'll go out to the general public uh, not just the members of the group but it'll be on the group page as well as I said you're very welcome to post your own thoughts opinions ideas questions photographs and videos if you fancy doing a video yourself then by all means post it on the group and any inspirational quotations you might think are appropriate to the group but please don't spam the group uh, with stuff um, and especially stuff that might be appropriate on your own Facebook timeline uh, just leave it to perhaps one thing a day rather than half a dozen things in the day so that then it, uh, it does give other members an opportunity to offer what they want to offer as well and not to feel that they're being pushed out in a way by the amount of contribution that uh, particular individuals might be making. As you know in any study group in a live session uh, there are people who can't help but bit like me nowadays, can't help but uh, put their opinion forward and sometimes hog most of the time that you've got. Uh, we don't want it to be like that. Uh, let's have in mind that we're sat around together in a group, in a room, although we know we're not, but let's try and get that conversational tone where everybody's got a chance to contribute actually into the group. Above all else, I hope that you'll enjoy your reading or your listening. Lent's often referred to as a joyful season because coming closer to God is meant to be, uh, and most certainly is, a joyful experience. I guess that uh, at first sight, reading the same thing over, uh, over and over again for 40 days might seem simple. But uh, the Word of God, as we hear in the New Testament, is like a 
two-edged sword. It searches out and pierces through to uh, marrow and joints <laughs> and gets into the heart of things. So expect to be challenged. Above all else in this Lent challenge, I hope that you'll enjoy it. Lent is meant to be a joyful season. It's often referred to as a joyful season, even though for lots of us it's a serious season. It is actually a joyful season because we're looking forward to a closer relationship with God, which should be always a cause for joy. So as I said, above all else, please do enjoy uh, this Lent challenge. And I hope that we'll all feel blessed by God and one another and the challenge as a whole. So thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Uh -huh.